Wild Biz Weekly is Omaha's only local business news magazine podcast. I'm thrilled that you're here. We're right here in the Mastercraft building, by the way, which is a, uh, uh, an incredible, um, uh, what should I say, vortex of entrepreneurial energy and activity. It's a perfect place. And we're here, by the way, thanks to the generosity of Creighton University and particularly the staff of the College of Business Administration. Let's hear it for Creighton University right here. That's right, that's right. The show you're watching right now is produced in part uh, as a result of a bunch of business students. They're uh, honors students as a result of Dean uh, Anthony Hendrickson uh, allowed us to work with them. They've contributed mightily to the show. They research content. They work with me on guest selection. And they're right here supporting the Wild Biz concept right here in the live audience. So, by the way, if you're interested in a business networking event, you might want to stay abreast of what's going on with the Wild Biz Weekly tapings. Uh, in January of 2013, we're moving into the Creighton Harper Center. Center. Fabulous environment for uh, for networking, bring guests, clients, friends. It's a terrific place to share information. Speaking of sharing, I'm going to talk after our, our first two guests today uh, a little bit about this incredible book. It's called The Mesh and it introduces a new business model and the model is called the sharing platform. It's all about sharing and gaining access to products and services and information rather than necessarily purchasing them. It's a fabulous concept. It's already being implemented in a variety of industries and it's actually very applicable to the WowBiz platform. So uh, don't uh, go away, stay close, and we'll talk a little bit more about the Mesh book and the, uh, the sharing platform in a few minutes. Now, revenue is where it's at. Of course, we all know that. It's not easy to grow the top line, especially if you're a mature company. We spoke earlier uh, to a gentleman who was, who was running out of Sioux City, a very mature firm. Tough to raise sales, right? You got the established customer base, and uh, sales are about here, and next month they're going to be about here, and next year they're going to be about here, right? Very difficult to get double digit sales growth if you're in a mature industry. So, that brings us to what we call pipeline management, right? Pipeline management is all about how many people can you at least get to be aware of, uh, of uh, your product or your service or your company's name and then they come down through a pipeline. Imagine a broad siphon and they're coming down a broad almost like an oil pipeline or an oil siphon and it gets narrower and narrower as it gets towards the bottom and fewer and fewer people are interested in buying your product. So how do you get them in at the top and how many are going to be at the bottom? We're going to talk about this critical topic right now with an expert. She's here in Omaha. She's a sales trainer, a marketing expert. She's outstanding and talking about custom, uh, customer relations management. Please welcome my good friend. She's a Vistage member, by the way, Pauline Stark, everybody. Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, great audience. They appreciate you and this topic. You know, once they realize, they even, they know how difficult it is to get pro suspects, prospects, customers, and book the business. It's a, it's a process. It is a process. And it's, it, it, tell me a little bit about your, your background before we jump into this. You, you, you run a marketing firm and do. you do this kind I of do, thing? I do, and I do sales training. Uh -huh. I've worked in international companies where we had to sell products all over the world mm -hmm. and make sure they fit and everybody was happy. I've sold through banks who didn't think they were salespeople. Yeah. And let me tell you. Bankers need to be sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, have you ever run into a situation where you, you think you've got a lot of prospects and people that are generally kind of interested, but then they don't drip down to the bottom of the pipeline and, and there, there's no booked business? Ooh, huh? Have I ever? Yes. Tell, tell me about your experiences um, there a little bit. What have you learned? What, uh, what I've happens? learned is that just because somebody's breathing air and uh, eating food, it doesn't mean they're a prospect for your business. Mm. One of the things that really makes me crazy is the first time I ask uh, one of my clients, well, who's your market? And they say, oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, because that now that big old pipeline isn't big enough to you know, get them all down. So you really have to start and say, who really is my market? Yeah. Because I've been out, and if you try to sell your products to the world, yeah. you're going to end up with an awful lot of no's and an awful lot of frustration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it starts with that market. It starts with that concept and, and being more precise about who exactly. you're trying to sell to. Who, right. do, who needs my product? Now, how do we get people into the top of the pipeline? You know, I, I know a lot of salespeople, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you know maybe even more, and you know what they like to talk about? Car salespeople will say this all the time. Oh, I just want to talk to somebody who's ready to buy a car in the next week. If, you know, if they're not in that mindset, I don't care about them, right? Then you talk to the marketing and the advertising people, and their attitude is, we're interested in generating leads and getting people into the top of the pipeline. 
Well, are, are we all on the same page here or what's, well, what's going on? It's interesting because for years marketing has been over here and sales have been over yeah. here and they, the two never met. Yeah. But in today's world, marketing and sales really have to work together because marketing is responsible for help driving everything that goes into Absolutely, that pipeline. Of but it starts with really knowing who your customer is, uh -huh, uh -huh. knowing what their needs are. I call them pains mm. because people buy to solve a pain. Yeah, this is a very important idea. A lot of a lot of sales organizations think that people already know what the problem is, right? And so they want to get right to the yeah. solution and talk about why our product is great. Uh, the yeah. marketing people, I think, have, oftentimes have a better handle on talking about kind of getting into the emotional yeah. dimension of the problem. Well, Lynn, you've hit a really great word in the sales area because emotion. Yeah. And when you think about sales, people buy on emotion. Yes. And they justify with logic. Yes. yes. So. And that's been proved. That's not oh, just a cliche. Proven. That's oh, been it, proven, it, right? That's exactly true. All right, right. So you always want to understand the emotion behind it. Yes. Why do people want to buy this? Who's my best market or what does my prospect really look like? Sure. If you want to fill the top of that pipeline, you have to understand that. All right. And you have to understand what happens if they don't buy your product? What pain are they going to go through if they don't buy your product and service? Exactly right. So now, what's the best case. way to get them from the, let's say for instance they say, you know, I'm interested in WowBiz, I find that yeah. very interesting, yeah. I might be interested in investing some money in the WowBiz right. stuff. Um, how do I get them from the top to the bottom? Is it, is it technology? Is it sending 37 emails? Mm -hmm. is, it, is it about psychology and changing the message? Got any quick tips for us as we well, sign off Well, quick tips here? are it's all about relationships and mm. how you build relationships and how you relate through those relationships. Sure. You know, and technology is part of that because you can't ignore the whole phenomenon of social media. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. All that. And all of that. And let me tell you, in LinkedIn, you can start bringing them in because you can identify with those groups. You can reach out to people that have contacts with yes. the people you want to reach through, start bringing them down that pipeline and it narrows them down and it keeps you from having to chase the world because now you're focused in on those who really have a need. Yes. You're leveraging your relationships through technology to yes. help you get more of those people who have that need Yes, and you're bringing them down until finally you can get them to where you can close it in. One quick question. Okay. I'm going to put you right on the spot. All right. Do most organizations and sales groups, do they close too soon or do they close not soon enough? In your opinion, do they ask for the order and say, I'd love to have your business. Uh, here's the sheet of paper. Sign here. Do they wait too long in general or do they, uh, do they, uh, do they close prematurely and ask for the order prematurely? I know you're looking for a yes or no answer and there is not such a thing. No. But Lynn, really, they close on the wrong thing. Ah. They try to close because they're trying to sell their product. Yes. They don't try to close based on what the client or the prospect really needs. Yes. And if you're supplying what the prospect really needs, the close happens without you having to force it. Maybe less push and more pull. Less push and a lot more pull. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, Pauline Stark right here. Business Evolutions. Business Evolutions. Thank you. Awesome job. Very good. I appreciate it. We'll be right back with a fantastic guest. We'll be right back. Thanks so much.